and uh, yeah, without further ado, Linda. Go. Right, thank you very much. Um, I work for Wedgwood AB um, in Stainless, and um, we supply audiovisual equipment to businesses and education um, throughout the UK. Uh, one of the things that we notice with technology is that the manufacturer's representatives have come down and explain things to us, and we'd understand it, but people that we were selling it into didn't always understand it. So we did something about that, but I'll come back to that a little bit later and touch about the different types of technology that there is. Um, but basically, when we were looking at digital signage, we looked at lots of different packages and we thought, it's not really relevant, or the ones that we did like, you were costing several thousands of pounds and you had to work over people's service to work them, which cost a lot of money. So we wondered if we could do something in-house and produce a standalone piece of software that we could do digital signage on, and we actually have, which is called Repeat Software. So I'm just going to touch it on this a little bit. So what is digital signage? If we've got a printed poster, um, such as where you may have in the shop windows or, or what have you, if you want to change that, then obviously you've got to get it reprinted and redone again, and there's a cost to do that. So what digital uh, signage basically is, is a digital poster to allow still or moving images um, to be displayed in your window, etc. And as you can see this one, as the plants are changing, that could be your product or services. And you can schedule things at different times of day um, to show to people. So for instance, this one's just telling you a little bit about uh, landscape gardens. This is something I invented, it's not exactly a, a flower shop. Um, but then it's sort of like at three o'clock, um, in your business, if you wanted to change the message, you can do. And you do that all digitally. You don't have to look at your watch at 3 o'clock and think, oh, I've got to change it. So, uh, what this standalone software does is, you sit it on your PC, which is with the space, and you can display it onto two um, large or small screens. So you can add one onto your reception area, and then when a visitor comes, you can change that to welcome Mr. Smith. And, um, uh, and that's it. So I just want to demonstrate to you how we can actually easy to do a presentation. So you click on here, create new presentation. The first thing it does is it comes up and tells you what size resolution your screen is. So you can either design it for your laptop or you can design it for the screen that it's going on to. And we click create. And here you have a whole lot of things that you can insert. You can insert pictures, you can insert animated GIFs. So as John was saying earlier, if you want to make something exciting, you can have lots of different little moving images. You can also use it to give instructions as well. So if in your shop window you want to say, um, I don't know, baking a cake or something, these are the ingredients you want and this is how you do it, you can have an animated GIF that actually shows you how you make a cake and you can run a video showing you the process. So there's lots of little things that you can do with it. So the first thing we can do is we can bring in a picture. And you go and find a picture which is on your laptop. So I'm just going to choose a castle here. And whatever elements that you bring in, you can do things with. So I'm just going to resize that and we can use that as a full screen. So that could be your company logo or uh, your backdrop or whatever. Um, so on top of that, we can bring something else in. So I'm going to bring in a flash clock. And these clocks, you can, work, you can have three or four different clocks on and you can show the time in Hong Kong, the time in Berlin, different times. It doesn't just have to be the UK. And again, we can resize it. And you can also change the background with little things like that. So if I go into background and click choose, there's a nice neat little application in here. I'm just going to do a screenshot. Choose a background picture. Just copy that um, screenshot I've done. And you can just select the colour, any colour that you want from it. And pop it in there. And again, you can resize that. So this package really has got, you know, whatever that you want to do with it. You can make it as exciting or as, as not exciting as you wish. Um, we can play videos on it. You can put sound in and you can put music in. So I've got sound running on here at the moment. 
but just give you an idea. We have. So these are all the various elements that you can have. So you can have the schedule so that you're running a video between 1 and 2 in the morning and you can change those particular things. So all you do is just take a little video file, put it on a loop and just let it run to as much as you like. Um, then easy just to remove it, you just click delete and it's gone. Um, so I don't want to go through the whole thing because I don't want to bore you to death with it. Uh, but basically, you know like you've got a playlist on your iPod with your music in it, you can actually have a little playlist of all the different images that you want to do. So if you're doing, I mean, I don't know what your businesses are. I was talking to a lady earlier that was doing uh, textiles, another lady that was dealing with jewellery. You can actually put all the images in there and you can have various things. Um, if you go into, this can also generate your money as well. Because if you go into places like Woodthorpe Garden Centre, or even if you stood in a post office queue, I know they've got them in Skegness post office, uh, there's a little um, display screens above. And they stand there giving you all the advertisements. Now, if you've got, if you share the same, um, sh share the same customer base, um, just trying to think of an example here. Uh, say you've got a cafe next door to a, a dry cleaners. You could be running in a cafe or various menus, what you're actually doing, but you could also be carrying advertisements for the dry cleaners next door. So you can actually generate income using your digital signage. Any questions? Anybody using digital signage at the moment? No. <laughs> okay. Um, what you also need to be able to do is to have um, a little player as well. So you, if you're using your PC like I'm on here, if you're trying to do any other work on it, it's virtually impossible to be running that because you just have to be keep, you know, moving it out the way all the time. So what you can get is either a little media player or an old PC that you've got kicking about and just run it on and just put it at the back of the side of the screen and you can just let these run. <coughs> um, I'll just show you a couple of uh, little examples that we've done which will just show the, the diversity and the extent of what we're doing with signage. So that was a simple show up shot. This is one that we did for Boston College. Oh, there we are. Um, and that's what we did for that. So we can see that the clock and the date on, we can have different types on there. And that was just a still poster. But again, we can have different displays on things. So really, you can do on signage, you know, whatever your imagination takes you. There's all sorts that you can put in there. Um, touch screens are, are coming in quite a lot now. People are wanting to interact with the customers. And increasingly, I know if I go in our doctor's surgery now, you don't go to the receptions to check in, you go to the little touch screen and put your date of birth in and your name and it tells you when your next appointment is with a doctor. Well, increasingly, you can get people to interact with you. And there are now great big pieces of film that you can put on the shop window. You can have the projector at the back of them so that they're shining in there. You also got sunlight readable ones. So during the day, if, you, if you're south facing and you've got the sun on them, you can still actually see what you're projecting and you can have a touch film on. So when you're um, an estate agent, would be a good um, example. If at night you're browsing in town and you want to look at houses, um, if you use the touch screen outside the estate agent's window, you can actually interact with the digital signage package. Now there's not many digital signage for touch screens on the market, but we just, um, we're just doing well. I can't demonstrate it because I've still yet to get my head around it. Um, these packages just work on, on local area network, uh, but we are doing a professional version uh, which should be out in about six months' time, and that will allow you to update it over the internet if you've got a high speed broadband, of course. <laughs> so, for example, if you've got six shops around the country, you can sit at home or in a cafe or wherever you want to sit, and you can just update the information you want to go in there. And as soon as those servers, so, sorry, as soon as those screens <coughs> connect with the servers, the new information is updated and the screens around the world. So there's huge potential for these types of things. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Is there any questions on this one? Cost. Yes, Fraser. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, my question is, um, is there any evidence to suggest that customers are more likely to take notice of a digital sign compared to a traditional printed sign? Um, I don't know. I think because... No, there's no evidence. It's a short answer. Um, but I think, it's like you say, if you're standing in the bank and you're stood in a queue, your eyes tend to go to the... Um, to the screen up in the bank and you're watching things and what you can do with digital signage you can bring in RSS feeds which basically you bring in a feed from such as like the Met Office or the BBC News and you can be actually be playing it down there you can also bring in a webcam or uh, your website so that you can actually have information up there as well so I think it's the fact that each sign on you can it's moving I know that one's not moving too much so that's probably not quite a good example but the idea is it's dynamic and it catches your eye and, and that sort of thing. Um, I did one for um, BM estate agents. Uh, we don't actually, um, I mean we're not actually graphic designers or anything, so we don't, whoops. I'm not playing, playing ball with me at all today, so. I think the question just in front of me was uh, cost, how much? Roughly, does this cost? Uh, this is £225 per licence, which is for on one PC. Um, I think a lot of the other ones that we're selling start around £600, but we wanted to keep it down for the um, SME market. designed for um, an estate agent, female estate agents in Skegness. Bear in mind that we're not graphic designers. Uh, there's also an opportunity, I think, for graphic designers to um, actually start, you know, they're already doing the posters and things for people. Uh, there's also that market there that they can actually offer um, to do the design for digital signage packages for, uh, for customers as well. So what we try to do with that is to show the beam of the lighthouse coming out and each of those houses, they're just in a little playlist and they just keep changing. Um, I'd only got a Dirksen uh, video in there so I'd put it in, they didn't have one to show me. But that just gives you an idea of the types of different styles that you can do. And as I said, we're, we're not graphic designers. Okay, are there any other questions on signage before I move off of that? No? Okay. My background is teaching and um, I left that teaching about 20 years ago and we set up Wedgwood um, in Skegness doing audio visual. But one of the things while I was actually at school was did notice that we used to get this new technology arrived and then nobody actually knew what to do with it. And uh, my little granddaughter goes to the local school in Skegness and she came home and said, um, well our teacher's got a new smart board now. And uh, I said, oh, that's brilliant. Um, you know, what are you doing on it, on this interactive whiteboard? And she said, uh, uh, well, they don't know how to, how to use it yet. And, you know, then she had to wait. She gave me all this tale about somebody else had to come in and help. And eventually, after a few weeks, they got it going. So very often, teachers only know just so much as what they, they know about the products. They don't always know about what's new that's coming out. And they don't always know... Um, you know, how we can inter integrate it all in together. So what I did was, because we have manufacturers coming down and training our staff in new products and new technology, we asked them if they could come up with some articles. And we will put it together into a magazine, which is free to download off the internet, at Teaching Technology. And um, it would explain about all the various little bits and pieces. So I'm just going to run through this, because I think some of the products that we've got in may or may not be of interest. Um, there's also, um, they also give us prizes every quarter, this one's still current, so if you want to enter on the website there's a chance to win yourself an interactive projector. So the 3M projector at the side, um, apparently that's been based on technology that they use for World War II pilots, where they could actually look down below the 
um, the plane to see things and they use that technology to bring an arm out as they bring the arm out of the projector which you can just see there um, it does it very very close and projects onto the wall and it's also interactive so you can go up with a pen and I can actually just interact all across there so the possibilities of that instead of having a projector and an interactive whiteboard is you can open up a whole area by nine foot by four and just interact on a wall and I think that that opens quite a few opportunities another little piece of equipment that may have interest that's NEC projectors we talked about 3D this morning um, and there's a lot about printing uh, now I'm not sure about 3D in the um, in the business sector but certainly in the education they're bringing children into this now and uh, they're using uh, pieces of software in maths and sciences where they can sit and watch planets going around and all that kind of thing all in 3D and we have to remember as well that these are the children that's going to be the next generation of business owners, etc. And they're going to be they're working with this technology the whole time. So when they go into the workplace, they're, they're going to want to be using that. Uh, another big thing at the moment as well is LED lighting. Um, anybody that runs projectors, you can go and pick a projector up for about £250, £300. But the cost of the lamp can be... 250, 300, 350 pounds. Um, and, you know, if one blows in three months, well, you know, you can't kind of dip out to one coast and pick one up for 15 pounds. It, it's quite costly. There are now projectors coming out that run on LED lamps. And Casio got a range, and um, they go up to 20,000 hours, which can be 11 to 15 years of use, depending on how often you use it. Um, and anybody, if you, if you go around with your business and demonstrate your products and services, you can put one of these little Casio projectors, which is about the size of A4, in your briefcase. There's another little device called an e which is basically a six inch uh, little bar, and that interacts the surface. And you can put that with your laptop all in a briefcase, and you've got a complete interactive solution to go anywhere that you wanted to. And if you've got internet connection again, then, uh, you know, you're Welsh your oyster. So you can annotate on it, present what you're doing, uh, all from a little package, and something that's going to last um, up to 20,000 hours with a light bulb. So Casio's brought those out, and then, of course, other manufacturers um, then decide to bring out other technologies. And view Sonic, uh, they're bringing out now 3D projectors. They've also got an interactive projector. But they're also bringing out cost-saving lamps, and these that they're doing use 70% less energy. And what they do with the adjust to the ambient light, so in here if we didn't need it quite so bright, it would automatically adjust, or it would automatically brighten. And again, you've got that same in all those particular lamps. So that's the more technology that's coming out. Any questions on that one before I move on? Oh, that was the software that we put into a, um, a restaurant in London. 